Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have decided to add USI's MKS pack as well as KSP Interstellar into the mix. And so now we have probably a lot more stuff out here. Uh, well, that I just I more or less have my stuff. But not all of it will be tagged RO compatible. I had tried to make sure that the USI stuff was RO compatible with configuration files that I added to RP2000. Uh, so sometimes it's work in progress RO, but sometimes the mods changed, the part name in particular. And so like this passenger cabin is not marked work in progress RO. Uh, the other parts are, and so that means that one is new or has been changed in some way. And same with, same with the KSP Interstellar parts, wherever they pop up. This inline wrapped phase array, I probably shouldn't even make that RO compatible. It looks so weird. Anyway, uh, I had investigated the KSB Interstellar parts in separate videos, and some of them are marked compatible, some of them aren't, but there, there's a lot of work to be done as far as compatibility is concerned. And well, this series is partly to help me to figure that out. You know, are things priced wrong? Uh, the survey scanner is marked non RO for some reason, which isn't quite right. But anyway, we now have a lot more parts. I don't recommend that people jump in and get USI for RP2000 unless they're pretty far along or KSP Interstellar for that matter, because it's all pretty far up here and I still need to figure it out as far as whether it's working right or not. So anyway, I have installed it, uh, installed them, and we'll see how that works out. But we haven't even gotten the first R&D unlock yet, so we're not getting to that stuff. Uh, I'm surprised none of it got into recycling. I really need more recycler stuff. But yeah, well, that's another thing. But we've got extra containers here. These are USI things. And that inflatable hab, we've got an inflatable hab, well that makes sense. I mean Bigelow, was Bigelow that made the, no, um, yeah, I think it was Bigelow that made the little thing on the ISS. So yes, inflatable storage module is a thing that a private company could do. So alright, but we have other work to do here. We have to get our first spacewalk done. What the heck, oh crash. So, no, 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 no. Okay. So we're once again building that EVA one just in time for the first spacewalk. You know what? Let's get some more upgrade points. Well, we can spin that one. Well, last time we sent Bill, this time we'll send Bob, just to be fair. Oh, we don't have any tech being unlocked. Let's fix that. We might as well get heavy rocketry. I guess a variety of heat shields would be good too. Should get my own station modules eventually. Alright, here we go. Bob. Time for Bob to go, SAS on, throttle up, and it's not going to match quite with the music, but here we go, ignition, got seven engines, and go. Okay, up we go, it sort of looks like Gemini in a weird way. Alright, we are definitely past max Q now. Still haven't gotten the Cape Canaveral scenery. I should really be launching out to Ampico though. Okay, cutting a few engines for G-forces. Okay, we've got battery short circuit again, separation and ignition. Still can't believe I relied on just one engine here, but um, alright, we've got that one engine. Oh, I should have replaced the propellant only docking ports with full ones, we have that technology now. Just to be a little bit more legit about it. Okay, everything operating nominally so far. Close to making orbit. 
Okay, we'll leave this suborbital. Separation. Okay, well, that's a good start. It's okay. And we've already done an EVA and made a report, so it's already checkmarked that. It held that from the previous mission. It's weird how that works, but we'll just do it again. So uh, let's transfer to the pod. Let's see. Transfer crew, transfer. Okay. This way we don't depressurize the whole cabin. No. <laughs> anyway, all right. Bob looks thrilled to be outside. Okay, it's a different location apparently. Well, we'll gather other EV reports later maybe. We don't really pass by the Sahara Desert. That would be nice. Shores. I could have gotten shores. Shores is always a tough one. Ah. Uh... Oh, come on. Ah, oh, we missed it. Anyway, let's make sure Bob is actually in the pod that comes back. Okay. And let's complete the orbit. Okay, it should be totally satisfied now, and we just have to splash down. Well, let's do it before more of our batteries go. RCS block failure, speaking of the devil. Okay, retroburn. Oh, these RCS... No, they're enabled, they're just not firing. Great. Well, then... I'll enable these. Alright, service module jettison. Sent mode on. Okay, so there's our path coming down. Looks good. Hopefully we'll get that Atlantic Ocean splashdown near Florida, but we'll see. Yeah, it still wants to do pitch even though I cycled it. To be honest, it could keep firing the RCS all at once. It's not going to get done with the fuel because I put enough RCS to deorbit on this thing. Well, service module explosion somewhere. I mean, the RCS isn't going to defeat Descent Mode. Whoa. No, oh, here comes Baja California. I feel like we should do more stuff with the moon. Now that we have USI and KSP Interstellar in here, we really need to step up our moon game and throw some of that stuff over there. But do we have the budget? And the contracts, is, that's tough. Honestly, science mode is probably just better. <laughs> I like science mode. Finally, flame effects. Oh, we might be Gulf of Mexico. Seems like we're coming down in the Gulf of Mexico. Well, that's okay too. All right, and splash down. Recover vessel. Recover to VAB. We keep reusing this pod. Okay, so we did that, right? That's all done. We did not fail that contract. So we got science data from the surface of the moon and position a satellite in a specific orbit of the moon. I think we should do these things. Uh, we should position the satellite in that orbit and then land it. 
So that's what I'm going to try to do. We've built our Mars missions already anyway. Well, we, we don't need a lot of power. Do we, we, we apparently don't need any power. I don't know how this works. How can we have no transmit power? And still have a connection. I don't know. Real, real antennas and me, we don't mix. I'm just gonna put a decent amount. <laughs> I'll put 30 and we'll leave it be. We'll call it a day. How, how is our science? Maybe we should carry more science. But is there any point to the goo if we don't bring it back? I don't think so. Observe plants. I'd like to observe plants though. So okay, we've got got some plants too. Accelerometer. Okay, so here we have a module with the modern control core, the three standard sciences that we have, a biology biology experiment, and then the com dish. Now we need fuels. Landing legs. We'll try and make it super sturdy because we know why. <laughs> We've got... well, the micro-landing strut is not so minor. micro. We've got three science experiments. We can tweak scale this. I've been reliably informed that three is... three is good for not tipping over many times. Maybe, maybe we can make this a hollow one. Just to make this a little bit, sort of tuck it in like that. Don't know how much good they would do though, if it was just the three of them. I don't think they could land on the moon. But the primary thing is to position a satellite in a specific orbit of the moon. So if the center one fails, at least we could guarantee that business. So that will capture into orbit and then land, and actually it'll have hopefully that much thrust weight ratio. Yeah, I guess this Odyssey one is what we use. Let's subassembly the Odyssey rocket. Well, that looks really small, actually. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, we could probably do with a, another stage. Having 8,000 from this stage is too much. Okay, well, we'll just have, uh, let's say, a 12 kilonewton stage here. What are we using down there? Well, more powerful engines. We haven't put RCS on here. Must do that. Well, if we're going to have a stage here, we're going to have a boost us to the moon. So let's make sure it's big enough. Should I have auxiliary engines on it? Just in case this one fails. What's its mean time before failure? We've only got 13.8 data units on it. 1.5% um, failure rate. The annoying thing about three-way symmetry on all this is that I still want four sets of RCS ports. So it's not going to match the symmetry at all. We still want extra batteries because we know batteries can fail. Might as well go with three-way symmetry on that. It's got three of those on there. And we should have solar panels on here too. Still don't have extending solar panels. Gosh, I need to work on that. Well, that doesn't look too bad. Still only got one engine here, though. Okay, well, I think we will build this. 47 days. And again, it's trying to fulfill two contracts. Getting a specific orbit around the moon and then... Um, and then land and get scientific data from the surface. Hopefully we can get to a different location than we've landed at before. Okay, so...
Well, we have plenty of time before Mars. Let's get this thing built and over to the moon. But really, we should be looking at station contracts by now. Stations. Build a new orbital station around Earth. Okay, I need to change how much that gives. <laughs> There's no way... No way I want to do that for that kind of price. Five Kerbals, even. We need to up that by a factor of ten. But I think that's like a stockish contract. I think so. You can tell, because the RP2 con the RP2000 contracts are just these. The rest are all stockish contracts, so I'm going to have to go in and figure out how to adjust the values of these. We do need to rescue some Kerbals. Best way of getting Kerbals. It's all those other private space companies just leaving them up there. Alright. Well... Let's see if we can do this. Okay, we've lined up with the moon, we've got backup batteries, SAS on, throttle is up, and I should have put three engines on the second stage just to keep up the three-way thing, but alright, ignition. And launch. No Kerbals to worry about. The rocket looks decent. Alright, we're past the speed of sound. Okay, everything's smooth so far. High G-forces, but again, no crew. Okay, second stage. And fairing deployment. Yeah. Speaking of things I need to do, still with the Sure Start engine plumes. Uh oh, we're going too high. No. You know what? We're gonna use the extra ignitions. For those uh, watching on YouTube who might not realize it, if you, I have, if I have music in the background, that means that. I'm doing this while streaming. And just now I was talking away with the stream audience and not paying attention. <laughs> so so that's why we went too high. Well, I don't know if we have comms over here. Oh, we do through a satellite. Okay, well, we will wait until we're at prograde and then burn. Because we don't have RCS on this stage. Okay, we are in orbit, still with 1,800 here. We'll probably just use it to flip around after I plot. We'll take advantage of it while we have it. It's not good policy to let Delta V sit unused or throw it away. No, we'll take that for now. We'll probably have to refine it a little bit. Looks good to me. Well, are we going to drift over? No, we're not going to drift over there in time. Okay. Well, the problem is these are unsettled right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prepare that RCS. It's just better. Okay, it says the fuel is still settled. Ignition. Okay, next. Well, we are recharging. This is good. Well, we have to get into that orbit. So we need to do a mid-course correction to sort of improve our situation. Got to set up like that. Okay, I think I can work with that. Let's just make sure that we are recharging. Oh, 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 okay, well. Yeah, okay, yeah. Beyond that time, that's, that's, 
that's just going to be a case being a stilter thing, I guess. Where I can't time warp past a certain amount. Great. Well, see, the thing about having only three landing struts is... Losing one is not a good thing. But I don't know if losing one actually means it can't deploy. It just has... weirdness. Alright, so we'll start with that, and then after capturing we'll have to tilt it a little bit to get into the correct situation. I'll just let it go out of power temporarily. We can definitely be in the right position when the burn comes, as long as we have comms. That's not guaranteed, though. Hmm, maybe I should have thought of that. <laughs> But we do have commas through that thing. That's a heck of a tenuous sort of situation, though. Let's just be quick about it and hope that it's okay. Another RCS block failure. Dang it, sure is realistic about these things. I mean, we got a lot of stuck valves on this puppy. <laughs> uh, on, on the lander this time, too. We've got a lot of extra Delta V here. Which is good and all, but it depends on how we get to use it. Okay, well, we see the ascending node there. Just have to eyeball it. Well, something like that's close enough. Okay, fix. Well. Minus one should be okay. Okay, on we go. We have a very stricken lander right now. Okay, good enough? No. Okay, we're a little bit low. Okay, now it's happy. It already says I maintain stability, even though I didn't. You can never tell with Kerbal these. I mean, really, any day. I was about to say these days, but any day. Now, would the North Pole be different? It seems like the North Pole would be facing... facing the Earth. I mean, we're polar, that's for sure. Okay, we should point at the sun again. But we should get rid of this stage, because as it is, if we try and land, I don't know about our thrust to weight ratio, maybe we'd be alright. It seems like we've got 4.85 and yeah, maybe we'll be alright, even if we, we uh, start out with this stage. Well, I want to set it up a little bit earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if this really is the North Pole by looking at the landing guidance here. Okay, it says North Pole here. So we know that that's okay. There is a North Pole to land at, and we won't have landed there before. I actually don't know if I've ever landed there before. <laughs> uh, the South Pole is the one everybody's trying to land at, so... Let's see how far away... Is the North Pole still North Pole? Okay, Mare Figoris is also somewhere I haven't landed yet, so that's that would be okay too. But there's a lowland here. Must not land at the lowlands or midlands, so that's tough. I want to go as long as possible while still. Oh, I didn't want to change our inclination, but okay, that's fine. With, without overrunning the North Pole, and then so if we fall short, that's okay. Okay, ignition. And this will ensure that this also impacts the surface, so we get rid of it. Okay, well, we don't want node. We want to eject that off. Deploy the landing gear. Though, one flaw is that because one of our landing gear is broken, um, it keeps making that sound. 
So, we're going to go to the tracking station and come back to it. Okay, that is not making the sound. It is highlighted in red. So, we're not fully recharging here. Um, 0 0.03. That means one unit every 30 seconds. So that's 150 minutes. That should give us enough time to get to the surface. Don't know about transmitting the science though. But we only have 320 capacity overall. I guess I'll turn to the sun and try and get as much power as I can. Anything interesting over here? No, it's just in space high right now. Let's check 10 minute burn time at most, but we don't need all that. We are currently over the North Pole. So anywhere around here we come down would be good. Now it's pretty happy about power, that's good. Are we close yet? Near the moon. Uh, okay, gravity scan from above the north pole of the moon. We get some signs for that. Okay, well I'll start this burn with some time to spare. Because we're coming straight down. And it's probably more accurate when you're coming this deeply than not. You can actually see the, the degenerate point at the pole. That's the point where things don't quite match up right. That's why you see a sort of line there. Our camera is turning because we're close to the pole as well. Almost sort of curving into the pole. That's sort of fine. This definitely not fine. Oh, it just added some more definition to that stuff. There's a lot of places I don't want to land at. <laughs> Here, maybe. A lot of rocks, though. Let's try and get rid of some of the horizontal speed sooner. Ooh, ooh, okay. That's not good. Already trying to trip tip over here. Probably the missing RCS port. Okay, no more, please. All right, we've made it. Yes? Yes, uh, no, we have to transmit science. Okay, transmit science. Got the gravity scan. And atmospheric pressure. Okay, what about the goo? We can get 8.1 science from the goo at least, but recovering it will be good. Transmit. Alright, so we've done it. I've landed on the moon. I didn't collapse even though we've got a red strut 